Hello everybody, my name is Braden DeBoon with Ontario Tech University and today I'm going to be talking about my paper Backlash Compensated Active Disturbance Rejection Control of Nonlinear Multi-Input Series Elastic Actuators for the IEEE ICRA 2020 Virtual Conference. So, a quick outline of today's presentation. First, I'm going to have a quick introduction, then I'm going to talk about the differentially clutched series elastic actuator, and then move into the backlash compensated active disturbance rejection control, which is a contribution of this paper, and finally finish off with a conclusion. So, a little quick introduction. So, series elastic actuators with passive compliance have been gaining increasing popularity in force controlled robotic manipulators. So, one of the reasons for this is the actuator's ability to um, infer the applied torque by simply measuring def deflection in the elastic element, which is in most cases this series spring. But one of the issues with this is that if there's any kind of mechanical backlash or un unmodeled dynamics or nonlinearities in your system, that position control can become tricky. And when the position control is off, then your inferred torque can be off as well. So this paper aims to address this issue. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the differentially clutched series elastic actuator, which is the actuator used to test these, uh, the proposed control scheme. So the differentially clutched series elastic actuator was a actuator that was presented in ICRA 2019. So it consists of an active element, which in this case is a geared DC motor, a series spring, a differential gearbox, as well as a magnetic particle brake. So this topology allows, actually, it's kind of a multimodal approach. It allows a bunch of different topologies depending on the um, applied current at the, at the magnetic particle break, as well as the inputs of the D geared DC motor here. And by kind of using the two in tandem, you can have a bunch of different modes for this particular actuator. But of course, um, both the motor and the differential gearbox contain mechanical backlash as well as the magnetic particle break introduces some nonlinearities and, and so on and so forth. So for the differentially clutched series elastic actuators, there's multiple encoder positions, but the ones that we're interested in today are the DC motor, which is a typical encoder position, as well as on the other side of the series spring. So here we can see that we have this DC geared motor as well as a um, a differential gearbox, both are geared elements, both introduce mechanical backlash. So, how do you control it? Well, with any new actuator, first obviously you need to do the characterization, so we can figure out the linear range of the spring as well as the spring stiffness constant. But after you, you've figured out the linear range of the spring, and you know what the stiffness constant is, you can infer the output torque. So when you use the deflection to infer the output torque, this is when the positional measurements become really important. And any deviations in those positional measurements that are introduced because of things like that mechanical backlash can cause unwanted or um, non-consistent output torques, non-consistent data on your output. So on the right here, we see that we have the simulated or the spring inferred output torque is nowhere near the desired output torque or the measured output torque, which is a lot closer to zero. And that is because of mechanical backlash. So this paper proposes the backlash compensated active disturbance rejection control. So active disturbance rejection control is introduced by Han is an error based control method and it's robust because it uses what's called a disturbance observer. And it also introduces a transient profile generator, which allows for a lot more reasonable references. So diving in a little bit deeper into this, we'll start with the profile generator. So the profile generator, like I said, kind of smooths all these, um, all of these step functions, which can have an infinite derivative. So it makes, it makes the reference a little bit more realistic to achieve, because obviously nothing can go from having uh, like say a zero velocity to a, a, a one unit velocity in infinite amount of time because then it would have an infinite derivative and that's just not physically possible. So the profile generator compensates for that. It also has a bunch of tun tunable parameters, this R and this H parameters, which tune kind of the smoothness and the acceleration factors. 
Active Disturbance Rejection Control also has a nonlinear feedback combiner. So you can use either linear PDs, nonlinear PDs, or nonlinear time optimal um, feedback combiners, which kind of takes some of the outputs of the extended state observer, compares them with a profile generator, and then does a little bit of math to propose an input. So these um, functions here, the FAL function and the FHAN function, are both functions that were introduced by Han in his active disturbance, or sorry, from the from PID to active disturbance rejection control papers. So these also have tuning parameters that we need to con consider. They have the, in this case, we'll talk about the nonlinear time optimal feedback combiner. It has also a acceleration and a smoothness factor, which we need to consider. Then, of course, we have the generalized linear extended state observer in this case. So what it does is it observes track states. It combines both internal and external disturbances into a total disturbance term. So gains can also be tuned for specific applications and it can have multiple state observers for more complex problems. So for multi-input case, you might have multiple extended state observers. Um, so the extended state observer, essentially what it does is it combines all things like the, the, non, um, the non-linearities and the unmodeled dynamics into this total disturbance term. And eventually what we get is a control law that can, that can um, compensate for those non-linearities. So here I demonstrate a discrete non-linear extended state observer, which can be used to be implemented in hardware. And then we have the control law, which takes into consideration both the proposed input from the nonlinear feedback combiner, as well as the total disturbance term from the extended state observer. So the control law, in this case, we can have a multi-input control law, which takes into consideration all of the errors from each of the states. So in our case, it was the, um, the DC motor, as well as the, um, the spring side differential gearbox, as well as the uh, magnetic particle brake takes into consideration all of those inputs, all of the errors, as well as all of the total disturbances measured by each extended state observer, or at least their, their versions of the contribution of the error. And then we can have this multi-input control law. So for multi-input, multi-output systems, the control law is a function of the proposed input from potentially many extended state observers. So these extended state observers, of course, have their own um, tuning parameters. So we can also combine this with a backlash estimation. So in this paper, we use the backlash estimation from Norden's exact model backlash estimator. So essentially what we can do is we can take the output of the plant and we can use it to estimate the backlash in our, um, in our DC motor as well as our differential gearbox. So it determines essentially the backlash position estimate, which can be used to adjust the spring deflection control angle. So here we see um, some preliminary results and some basic PID with an ADRC without backlash compensation. And here we can see that there is in fact a backlash error. So although it's measuring or it's controlling around basically zero deflection, we do have this non-zero output torque that's being measured because of that backlash. And obviously that's something we wanna get rid of because we want to have um, perfect match between this kind of deflection control and the output torque here. And we see that when we use a backlash compensated ADRC model, we do have something that's much more resembling of the, of the deflection. So it's a lot more linear relationship between deflection as well as the output torque. So some more results for the backlash compensation. Here we can see a constant deflection or a decrease in deflection. So it starts with a deflection of one radians and moves its way kind of linearly into negative one radians. So essentially it's the, the back, we'll, we'll notice the backlash a little bit more prominently here. And we can see that for um, the ADRC, the backlash compensated and the raw, we see that kind of around this zero point where we would really see that backlash, it switches. So we see that around the zero point around zero radians deflection, we see that the backlash estimation switches between essentially one side of the geared mesh to the other side of the geared mesh. And what that does is it gives us a lot more accurate representations of what's going on inside the spring to, to 
kind of get a better idea of the deflection of that spring. So on the right, the top right here, we see this is the ideal linear spring. Obviously, that would be the, um, the torque from an, the ideal linear spring. And here we see we have large dead zone for classic con classical controllers like the PID and the non-backlash compensated ADRC. And for the backlash compensated ADRC, we can see it resembles a lot closer that ideal linear spring. We have a much smaller dead zone for this backlash compensated ADRC. And here we can see a graph of the error for that. And you can see that, in fact, the backlash compensated ADRC performs a lot better than the PID and ADRC cases, or sorry, the non-backlash compensated ADRC cases. All right, so the proposed unified backlash compensated multi-input ADRC is a robust method to reduce the effect of nonlinearities caused by mechanical backlash and spring deflection. So future work required in tuning parameters, tuning all of those parameters that I talked about earlier today for optimal control of the multi-input active disturbance rejection controller. Here are some references for today's presentation. And thank you everybody for listening. Again, questions are welcome uh, at any time. Just post them wherever it is you post them. Thanks for listening. Take care.